For today, I want to do a quick review based on some of the feedback I got. Um, I got some feedback during the week and it has to do with um, the quiz. Some students wrote a very short, but wrote, wrote a sent or sent a mail. So the student complains that um, his effort in the quiz that was set for him was not rewarded in the sense that, and that's because when the lecturer sets up that course, he made the mistake of exposing all the answers, the correct answers, the wrong answers, everything. So when the student selects their answers, they get to see what is right or wrong. So because <coughs> the student felt that since he's able to see the correct answers and he could review the test, then it means that his effort was not properly rewarded. And I actually have a feeling that he probably, um, maybe the, when the lecture was set, maybe there were some mistakes. So, but in the middle of that, I now replied to the student. I said, you didn't give us any lead. No course code. You didn't point to any course code. You didn't point to any lecturer. You just gave a blanket complaint. Well, I've replied him based on that, that if he wants the issue to be quick um, to be reviewed because it was blaming it on the system as a whole. So I said, well, it's a case of a lecturer and the student issue, not the system. So, but if you want it reviewed, then you have to tell us which course and maybe refer to somebody in particular. But based on that, I also want to just quickly make, do this review again so that um, we don't make mistakes when we are setting up our quiz so that this kind of issue will not come up. And then, then I also want to just talk briefly on get feedback from us in case we have anything. Then I will take us through some, of, some other new things that I thought it was it's going to be important for us. The feedback, so I'm going to open up this. I don't know why my system is uh, wonderful this morning. Okay, so um, let me just take us through a quiz that is let me take us through this particular quiz and show us. Now, I think the setting of this, not this one, the setting of this should tell us, I want to use this. I hope the quiz is set there. Let's see the set, these settings. Then like today, I also want to talk about Google Forms. Um, there's something on Google Forms I would like to show us if you're interested and that's why I should have I also invited the non-teaching staff so anyone that is here would also be it is also good I want to show us on Google form it is possible I know some of us may be doing it already but I want to show us how you can send your if somebody fills your Google form for instance you set up the form um, you can get notification on when somebody fills that form or <coughs> also get you can also get um you can also do it in such a way that whatever the person whatever anybody feels gets to you directly you can see what they feel so um if that is important for some persons to be good to your show us i wouldn't mind to show us that so please um i'm not going to i'm going to ask that we mute ourselves but i'm going to mute us now it may be difficult for you to unmute yourself but for now Please just let us get into this. So this is the settings of quiz. I've been doing this for every time we have met. Um, this is just a, a brief overview of it again. Um, I said, when you, before you get here, how did I get here? Of course, you would have turned editing on and then select add an activity or resource. And then you pick the quiz and then you are here. So maybe I should just also back up a bit and show us what I mean. I said, if you, when you have turned the editing on, for those who don't know anything about it, you add activity or resource. And then of course you can pick the quiz. So if you pick the quiz, if you, if you click on that button once and you click on add it to open, if you double click on it, it will still open. So that is how we got to this page that you're seeing here. So now quickly, you put in the details that you want to put in here as instruction. Like I always say, you can also put the password for the quiz displayed here so that students would see it. And of course, you can. this is where you put the password. And you can see the password for that quiz is mock exam. 
And if you don't want to put it and you just want to announce it to them in the exam, very good. So this is it. Um, this quiz starts um, 3rd of June. Unfortunately, this is not June yet. So let's bring it back home. Today is 20, today is 28. So I'm going to put it for 28. And so, and it's enabled for 90 minutes. All attempts can be submitted. Um, in this case, it's only one attempt. Um, layout, one question per page. Um, here we said she shuffled the, qu the, the, the questions, not, not arrange it in, in, um, in chronological order or maybe a sequential order or something. We're saying that shuffle the questions. And this is where people normally have issues, these review options. This is where you get to display everything to the students. When you, are, when you are setting up the quiz, the review options determine how you set, how you allow the students to see the results. It gives you too much options. If it were for some other platforms, those platforms do not give you this kind of <coughs> flexibility, but this platform gives you everything that you can do. You can choose how you want the quiz to be, to be administered to the students. I told us that this attempt, anytime you click on attempt, it means that the students can go back and review each question. If you say attempt, a review the attempt, if I click on this attempt alone now and the marks, it means that anytime the student is done, the questions will be showing the, and then he will get to see what um, his marks. He can review it, but you will get to see his marks mainly. You may not be able to see the right or wrong answer, but the moment you say whether correct, he's going to see, he's going to see the questions, and he's also going to see he the questions he got correct, and the ones he failed. Now, the moment you now add right answers to it, it means that he's going to see the questions, what he failed, and the correct answer would be displayed below each question. So that is what happens here. So I've told us that the right way, the safest way based on our culture around here is to just leave them to see the max. The max will be sufficient. So if I click on attempt, the attempt, you can see what happens. But if I don't want that to happen, I'll click and then I can click individually. So that is what it is about this quiz and um, the review options that we want to know much about. So appearance, we said you can decide to have decimal places in your scores. Of course, you can decide to have that. I normally don't want that, so I used to remove it most of the time that I set up my quiz. Um, overall feedback, this is what the students get as feedback when they, um, you passed, you failed, and all that based on the percentages. Now, at activity completion, I told us strongly that always try to track the completion of your students. It helps the system to also keep tabs on the system, on the students. But if you don't want that, fine. But always try to do this. Um, to always try to do this for everything you set up. It will help to create, open up other possibilities for you as you go on. So this one says that um, students must view this activity to complete it. And it also allows that you must receive a grade to complete this activity. All right, so let's move forward. And um, so if I save and I display this, I just simply went through this because of the situation I told us about, the, the complaint, the feedback from a student. So if I copy that quiz password and I put it here, I hope it opens up for me. Um, let's see what happens. I think we should have over 200 questions here, if I'm right. If I'm right, we should have, okay, 100 questions. We can see 100 questions here, and then we can review all these um, questions. So I'll just quickly end, finish that attempt. Not take too much time on this. So I want to show us, now this is the question that was displayed for the student. Now, sorry, I didn't want to go out yet. So now I want to show us the back end. 
this is the back end here, the question bank. We go into the question bank and then we see, we select the, this is where the question is saved, 281 questions. Out of 281 questions, 100 questions were selected randomly. And then we can see the type of questions that were selected for the students. Um, I will still need to go take us through some things about quiz. There are some other type of quiz that, um, question types that I would like us to go through. And I will take us through that in due, in due, in due course. Um, sorry, I think I, my system. Okay, so these are the type of quiz. This is, um, this is what, this is, um, so this particular one is just for us to pick the correct answer and go so we can fill in the correct choice and we'll see what happens. So this is just it, um, nothing much to talk about. Um, and this is what I want us to take note of. Last week we went through the evaluation. I am thinking that I have a feeling that the school may, would, may start requesting that every, um, I, I don't have any information on this here, but I just have a, a feeling and it may just come to pass that you may be required to put evaluation maybe weekly or after after the after your 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 topics and then maybe to probably submit or they may even ask us to do a general evaluation that for that the students may evaluate and then we we'll submit without your input and all that i'm just saying this generally because <laughs> things like that happen around here so Please, as much as possible, please try and master this evaluation and see how it works for you. There are other things on Moodle that today that I'd like us to look at. There are several things here, and sometimes you wonder what these things do. Last week, I told us about lesson and workshop, and still, I would not want to take us through that because if we're still mastering quiz and assignment, it's a bit difficult to just quickly bring in something that may be a bit um, difficult. But all of us have been hearing about Coursera, Coursera, Coursera all over the week. Um, but again, I'd like you to note that um, Coursera, in their own way of assessing students, they mainly use quiz. They use, um, they, 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 they tell you to take quiz and in the end, you do peer, peer review and most of the time they end it up with a capstone project. Capstone, capstone project has to do with um, you giving you a project to do and then then you are be assessed. You may not be assessed by the same faculty that is on the course. You may be sent to another faculty to just assess your work, and then based on that, you are given a certificate. And if you, you, it is done within a specific specified time. So most of the time, the peer review is the same thing that we have here on the Moodle platform, which is workshop. You, you can do that. Now, if you look at this thing called survey, if I show us what survey is. Survey also behaves like um, um, also behaves like the feedback, but in this case, the questions are already predefined. The questions are already predefined. Let's say I select this. Um, let me just put something. I've not spoken to survey in a, in a long time, so but I just want to show us to do a general review. This is showing activity completion and students must complete this activity, must submit. And then I do a um, display. It. So this is what survey is. The questions are already uh, attitude towards thinking and learning. So there are standard industry questions that you, you have, that have been put here. So you don't have much input into this. You can't, um, you may not be able to, um, Okay, let's, let's look at the questions. Let's see if you can, before now, I wasn't able to um, edit the questions. Let's see if it gives us access to the questions. Uh, nobody, nobody has yet completed the survey. So, but th this has to do with um, your uh, editing it. So, but these are industry questions. Once you select the industry, once you select this, it goes back to showing you so you can put this up for your students and then they fill it and then they submit. So if a student is supposed to do this, so these are the things that you do, um, yeah, sub, um, submit, sorry, you have to do, 
I have to submit um, and just feeling so lazy to actually start clicking actually. So if I click on this, it does this. You can explore this, like somebody was asking me, what are the questions? These are question, standard industry questions that you can choose to use for your, you can just look at each of them and look at which one fits into what you like to do. And so this is it, we're done. And you can see, so if I go back again, you can see the kind of results that I started getting. So you can take this back and then you can look at what you would like to do with this. Um, skills, you can see the kind of graph that you start to see. These are things that, imagine that a lot of persons actually filled this. You can see these are the questions they filled and we can see the kind of graph that I am looking at. So imagine that we have a lot of persons feeling this and then the participants, you can see um, I'm the only person on this particip that participated in this. Then you can also download it based on how you want to download it. So this is summary, summary of what has happened, connected learning, separated learning. So this already defines how your students are learning. So I would like us to go back and give it a try. Um, let's also look at what the other type of questions say. I'm not sure I actually paid attention to any of the questions, so maybe I should do that again. Um, sorry, let me remove, let me see if I can just remove the, my response so that, um, okay, don't worry, let me just, let us, let us set up another one. Let us just set up another one. Let me duplicate this. I just wanted us to see this as a backup to what we did the last time. So survey, survey has several standards that we are able to engage. Survey has several standard questions that we are able to engage. So this, this talks about attitude in evaluating, <coughs> in discussion. In, what, in evaluating what someone says, I focus on the quality of the argument or not on the person who is presenting it. So you can look at these questions and if it fits into what you want to do, fine. But take note, like I said, these are the standards. Um, where is that editing? So these are the standard types of questions. So let's look at what they are. Attitude towards thinking, uh, critical incident survey, um, this one has to do with, um, so what I would just tell us to do is go through this. There are three types, there are three types. Um, so if I click on critical, let's see what it shows us. Um, see, so this is the type that they will type their responses. They will type the response and they will submit. Um, let me change that again and go to, let's look at the next one. This one has, there are three different types here, actual. Let's see what this looks like. So this one has to do with relevance, reflective thinking, interactivity, tutor support, peer support, interpretation. So a simple question about reflect, uh, relevance, my learning focused on issues that interest me. So you can check this, this, um, standard surveys out and see, I just want us to go through each of them and see what they look like. So this also, this one, this is preferred, preferred and um, I saw preferred, sorry, I should have picked that up, um, sorry. So this is preferred and actual, preferred and actual. So, so there are two types, that's preferred and actual. Let's mix these two together. Let me see what preferred looks like alone. So also, this also tells you, I think they're mostly the same type of questions. I just wish that we could do more on this, um, use this more, and we'll see how. Actually, I can see that it's, um, it's very good. When people, when we have a lot of responses, I would like to see how the graphs would look like. So please kindly take time out and look at this. Thank you. So let's move on to other things that I also had in mind.
Now, there's another one called um, choice. Choice is more like voting. You want to seek their opinion on maybe one thing, just, just one thing, um, just one thing. Um, so you go ahead and then you set up, you set up this choice. You can display the question horizontally or vertically. There was a time that we set up a quiz some time ago and they wanted them to accept that they would accept like times and condition. We decided to use choice. Before they could attempt the quiz, you first of all attempt, you first of all make, accept the choice, your choice, whether it is yes or no, before your quiz is allowed to display. So we did that and that was um, good. Allow the choice to be updated, no. Um, allow more than one choice to be selected, no. That's if you say yes, then that means that it can it will be in check boxes. Limit the number of responses. Oh yes. So you can put in your option here. You say yes, and you still say, um, let's see what it is. Here, here is where you specify the options that participants have to choose. You can fill in the number of if you leave this blank, then they will not be displayed. If you need more than eight options, then you can add three and all that. So, so we can say no here. And yes, put that in capital. And then you can add more. Availability time, results, you can publish the result. Do not publish it to students, you can publish it. Like if you ask, ask a question in class and you want them to just all of them to answer to gauge the knowledge of, um, of um, everybody to know whether they're actually following. You can quickly do this. So you can show the results to all the students and then of course you publish it. We don't want to show their names. You want to show their names. You can choose to do it the way you want. And show column for the unanswered. You can do that. And then include responses from inactive or suspended users. We're not doing that. So let's just do this and see what it looks like. So the Activity completion, I just want to track what each student would have done. And then, so here we are seeing this. The question is saying complete this. Where I've actually did complete this, that select yes or no. But of course, I'm not a student, so not yet answered. So this is what happens with this option. So um, choice, you can, it's just a basic thing that takes quick responses from students. So again, I would like you to just play around with that. It's a simple and very straightforward thing to set up. Now, the next thing I want to talk about, and I'm actually drawing close to the main thing I have for today. Um, the next thing I want to talk about, if you have a scenario where you want to, there's something here called database. You have a topic and you want all your students to contribute to it. You can to contribute in terms of uh, images, text and all that. You can use the database to collect all their activities. It's just another way to have an activity. The same thing goes for the wiki. Um, you, can, you can add and edit a collection of web pages, web pages, just like you have a um, wiki, um, Wikipedia. Uh, is it Wikipedia they call it? Yeah, Wikipedia. So you can use that to also do that. Now, I told us last week, I think I mentioned how you can use the URL to add URL, you can use it to add links to pages, websites, and a lot of things can go with that. For instance, um, I don't know how it will be, but you have a place where you went to the study, so your students go and study a particular thing. And instead of talking too much, you can just put the URL on this page and then it goes. Or you want to embed a YouTube video, you can do it from here. So um, now let me talk about glossary. Glossary, I did some things with the VC the last time. I think I won't show us. Let me just go to that particular glossary and show us what it is like. Mm, I did some things with the VC. Where is it? 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 Okay, fine. So I did, I did, the VC set up a glossary for his own students. And I hope I have it here. Uh, okay, so this is a glossary, but this is not for the VC anyway. So this is a glossary. Sorry, I want to check. I thought I have it here. 
and for me just a second. Okay, it's not here. Okay, so this is a glossary, and imagine that you want to turn this glossary into a quiz. Maybe definition of terms, and you want to turn it into a quiz. Now, there is another functionality that is available to you as a lecturer. So let's, let me log in as a lecturer, All right? So now, when you turn editing on, let me turn editing on and see what happens. The moment, anytime you turn editing on, most of the time there is something here called add a block. Many of us don't pay attention to it, but it's always there. When you click on add a block, these blocks, these things that you're looking at are things that you can add to your course. They are always available. You can add random glossary to your course. If you add a glossary to your course, you can also add this thing called random glossary. So it picks definitions from your glossary and displays to the students while they are on the course. You can do latest, latest announcements, latest plans, and there is something I wanted to add this morning. Export glossary to quiz. Export glossary to quiz. So you have done your glossary, you can actually export that same glossary into a quiz. So it takes the glossary, make it available for quiz, and then you can upload it like a normal quiz. The only thing that you have to do in this matter is that you may want to now edit the questions of the glossary and then for instance, if I say export glossary to quiz in this, in this, um, on this, and this thing, and by the time I check here, you will see this. Say, please click on the action icon to configure this. So, configure. You may not want to use this. It's just like I always say, it's uh, the, all the things are just available to us. And I decide to say leadership. And I want it um, alphabetical order or random. And then number of glossary, I put in the number. Sorry. I put in a number, a figure. I think I have 19, 19 questions there. So I can just choose all the 19. Select the question type. I want it to be multi choice. Um, I can even make it um, um, short answer. I can say it's short answers um, since it is um, this in case is not important. The import images or audio files. If you have in your glossary, you can actually add images or audio files. I'll show us in a moment um, where this will appear on the right hand side on the page. You can leave this as default. And when you have done this, now this is what happens it says export entries and create 19 questions. It will do this. So export, and then you have an XML file. So when you are now setting up your quiz, when you set up your quiz like we normally would do, when you set up your quiz like we normally would do, let's say you have a quiz already set up. Um, which quiz can I just quickly duplicate here? So I don't have to go through the settings all over. I'm just showing us this. This may interest you. This may be something that you want to engage and uh, let's go into this quiz now this quiz is still looking very um i have to adjust go back to the settings and adjust the dates it has a password of test 20 and today is um, we're in may so we can put this for one week i can put this from today which is 28 28 then the quiz is for eight minutes. I think every other thing looks fine. Um, review options. Okay, I can just allow them to see the marks continuously. Appearance is good. This is good. Fine. And then let me see. Good. This is good. So once I've done this, and I see that it is showing the quiz is not yet available. That's because it's showing in the evening. I didn't check that time, sorry about that. Um, the time I wanted to start is this morning. Please, you also need to take note of these things when you're setting up your quiz. Um, sometimes some of these timings can become very funny if you don't do them properly. 
you just set up the quiz and so until you see attempt quiz or uh, something or maybe if you have not yet if you are not yet starting then you just ensure that you set it up properly then i can go back and go to the question bank already i'm sure that there will be questions here so this is the way to reuse your so this is actually picking up questions from my god this is going to pick up 80 questions i don't think it is um okay so this is this is um this is questions from the VC's glossary this, this is his own question from his own glossary i, I let me just do this and it shows this so i just show us what this looks like test 20 and you can see he did all those questions about 80 of them so you can see so if the student has read gone through those glossary you would see these options and then be able to select it but obviously of course you are supposed to um edit this now you notice that this is showing in this way for the lecturer that asked about max questions this was done from the glossary and then the Came here. You can actually in, in, insert symbols and all that. So, um, sorry, I have to go back now. So that is exactly what happens. So if I decide to go to the question bank and I want to add more, I want to create another question bank for the questions I'm bringing in. Uh, here I have 108. I have eight. I have another question mark. So what I can simply just come here to do is under this under this um, category, I can just choose any choose any category I want, any category I want. Um, let's put this category and just call it leadership. So I want to add more to this question bank, and I have, I have a category called leadership. So where is it? This is leadership. It's not without with any question. And I decide to import the questions I'm bringing from the from the quiz. I will select XML, and then I allow other things to go. I check it up, and I'm fine. And then I pick the question and drag it, and drop it there. Then I import it. Of course, to bring in um, fill in the blank. I just want to see how it looks like. So this has already created filling the bank questions. Um, and then I can go back to this question. I can go back to this, edit this quiz. While this is going on, I can now say, in addition to this random question, come back here and please add more to the questions we have here add more to the questions we have here. So I can decide to say, add another set of random questions from this bank. Now I told us you can add several questions from any bank. So you can say, pick 10 questions from this bank, or put the put, um, 10 questions. You can, if you want to add the 19 question, you have to select 10, say add, and then you come back and add another nine question to it. So, and that is what we do with, um, so you can see it is already here. I can, I can decide to see what random question is it gonna pick for this quiz. So let's look at it. Just wanna pick it up from there. So this is it. So that's exactly what it does. I've just, this is not a, um, this thing. you can decide to edit this question any way you want it and do more with it. So, um, like I said, the quiz, this particular type of um, option would allow you to also do a lot of work in editing the questions again, so that you can test something based on what you want them to focus on. So let me just quickly, without wasting much time, let's go back to that. Um, so how do you use your glossary? You can simply just go ahead and add your glossary. Um, you can add glossary and you give it a name, definition of um, definition of terms. Definition of terms. And then you add a description to it. 
Now take note, anytime you're setting up glossary, it's also important that you note, you say this is global, this is what it's going to do. Or a global glossary has entries which are linked to from throughout the site. So if you say it is, gloss, it is global, um, you will see that anytime a word from your glossary is mentioned, along all over the site, it will link to that, to your listings, can bring up the definition from your glossary. But the only thing with, with that is, of course, if a student is not enrolled into your course, you may not be able to access that. So, and this is what happens. So this is a main glossary. This is a secondary glossary. There's only one main glossary in every, on every course. Main glossary means main. That's the main, the standard overall glossary, then all the other glossaries of the secondary. Then you can edit how you want the entries to be approved by default. Always um, edit, allow edit and duplicate. You can go through this, but I can decide that if you want your students now, mainly, uh, most of the time, glossary is an activity. It's not just for the lecturer alone. You can allow the students to also put in definitions, and then you see how they are doing. Then you can do put in ratings. You can the kind of rating so your students can go back. They can rate it, rate or each other's um, glossary input, and you can decide to be the only one adding the glossary, which is also fine. So these are things that you can do on your own. Um, requires entry, student must create one entry at least. So you, you want to rate student based on, on the activity they've done on the glossary. They've gone to find out a term about the course, something that is relevant to a particular topic. Um, just tell them you can enter five topics, five entries, come back here with um, five definitions that you have read from this, from this um, lecture note, or uh, ten, 10 different definitions you can go ahead and tell them to come and put it there. So it depends on how you want to use it. I'm just telling us that this is what you can use the glossary for. Sometimes we want to be the only one creating it. It can take a lot of work. So you can add a new entry to this glossary, and then you can put, where, um, for instance, I can say WordPress, put the definition of WordPress here, um, the CMS, you can see it's a CMS, and and keywords, I can put CMS, and then if I have a file, I can upload, and then I save changes. I save changes, and then it is here already. So you can link it, you can hyperlink it, and do, you can copy the link and copy it to another place, and link it maybe to a particular question or something. So that is just a brief overview about glossary. This is it. This is your PowerPoint presentation. And you want to record your narration on it. Simple. Under the slideshow, under slideshow, there is record slideshow. Then if you click on it, if you click on it directly to just start from, to get to the next page where you start recording. Now, but if you select this, <coughs> this um, arrow, this arrow here, it will give you the option of either from the beginning or from current slide. Let's say that you're on slide three, you can do current slide. So the recording from the beginning would ask you these questions. Slide and animation timings, um, narrations, ink, and laser pointers. So you just simply click on start recording. The moment this happens, as I'm talking now, it's already recorded, and then you start speaking to this slide. You say, turn, um, turn it in, see you turn it in, and the use of turnitin plagiarism detection tools, I mean software. Now, if you look at this timing that you're seeing here, please, can you see this? Hello, sir? Oh, sorry. <laughs> I think I'm the one that is, please. Can you see, um, Prof, can you see what I'm seeing, sir? Please, you can unmute yourself and respond, sir. Hello, sir? We can hear you, sir. Okay, so I want to be sure that he's seeing what I'm, I'm hearing. I'm saying. Everybody's seeing. Everybody's seeing everybody see the screen. Okay, fine. Now, this is it. I've been recording on this slide. The next thing that will happen is if you notice that this first time I hear is recording, must to be time for everything. Please, it is well with me. With the meeting today. Okay, so now the first time I hear is recording the time for this particular slide. The second one is recording for all 
the time you spend recording on all the slides. Now, if I move to the next page, you can pause your recording, then you can move to the next slide. When you move to the next slide, take notes. There are things here that you can use below here. You can pick up a pen and then you can annotate on it. You can annotate on it. You can annotate on it. You can do whatever you want to do. You can write, you can circle, you can, that depends on how you want to do it. But everything you're doing here, take note is recorded. Um, your, all your annotations are recorded. Then you move to the next slide, you speak to the same slide. You move to the next slide, you speak. Turnitin is a website, Turnitin is a repository for papers, Turnitin is a database. So you, you can talk. As I'm talking to each of these slides, you will notice that the timer here is starting from the beginning again. That's what happens when you're recording. It will keep going back, 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 it will keep going back. And you can repeat if you want, you can repeat if you want. And then once you are done with all the recording, several ways to get out of this page. You can use all these functionalities. You can even move from one slide to the next one here. Then there are, there's these three dots here. You can use some of this function or you decide to end the show here. Or you decide to end the show here. If you don't have any, if you don't have other things running on your system, you can use, you can use it to end the show here. Um, sorry, I have to stop this call from coming. So you can use it to end the show here. So once you end the show, you notice that you have the recordings on each page. Start recordings. The moment this happens, as I'm talking now, it's already recorded, and then you start speaking. So you can check for each of the for each of the um, slide. You can decide to check. You, if you are not satisfied with any of the any of the recording, you can delete it and record. Come back here and say record from the current slide. Then you record for this slide and you say you come back here and check again. You can decide to clear all, or you can decide to clear for current slide. You can decide to clear the timings. You can decide to do a whole lot. Now, when you want to, when you are done recording, your student. I've done a video on this already, so I'm just repeating myself now. Um, what you can do, you can come here on setup slideshow. Um, use time, you, under the advanced slides, using timings pre, if preset. If you use this, that means that the slide will flow itself, through it by itself, even though the student can still control it. But when it gets to the end of the um, a recording, it will go to the next thing. But if you use save it under manual, that means that the student will control the movement of how they listen to it. I see a lot of lecturers just save it like this and upload. And then the student will have to come and play this individually. Well, that's not the best way to do it. Simply the best way to do it is to go to save us. On that save us, you pick up where you want to save it. And then once you do that, you under the save as type, please take note of this. It is PowerPoint, PowerPoint show. You save it as PowerPoint show. PowerPoint show. The moment you save it as PowerPoint show, you will notice that the extension is now PPSX. So it's not PPTX. So, and that is what you upload. This file with this extension is what you upload for your students. And your students will be happy that you did so. All right, I believe we can see this page. Sorry, this is a bit of um, a diversion from the this thing, but this can also help you in case you decide to use the URL on Moodle to put up a Google form for your students to fill. Um, I discovered that we do create Google Forms and then until we go back. So a very quick way to create a form is on your spreadsheet, is to create that form, click on the create form. And then you create um, a simple form. You can just put a um, simple form, simple form, and then you add some questions to it. You can add some questions to it. Uh, what is your name? And then you put in short answer. Then you can add 
some other things. Um, your input uh, type, your ID number. That's another thing that you can put, short answer. And let's assume that this is just what we want to put on the Google form. I just put a, a name here, simple form. Now, this form is done and ready, and I preview it, and it's looking like very okay. If I fill this form, if I fill this form, so it must be a number. If I fill this form and I submit it, the response has been recorded. The only challenge with what I've just done is that it's not going to bring up, I may not know when, when the form has been filled. I may not know when this form has been completed. I may not know when this form has been completed. Um, sometimes I don't get feedbacks. So you can always come back here and check. But you also want to have more functionalities. How can I get to know when this form is concluded? And then you come over to this place and then you're seeing the responses. What of if this response were to be mailed to you? Instead of just coming here, what of if you're able to get all this response in your email, um, maybe weekly, based on a certain period? Now, what you can simply do when you are on your phone is you can go to tools and then you look at notification rules. The notification rules, any and any changes made, anytime any change is made, it will notify you. Okay, so this is the form I created. So I said, and I filled this form, and then this is a response from your, the person filling it. So I now said that, what of if the time, the moment they fill it, you are able to get this response in your email, or you want it sent to a particular email? That's what I want to show us. Now, there is something called tools here, notification rules. This notification rules, please, I, I hope you're seeing this. Yeah. Yes. Good. Now, this notification yes. rules allows you to tell, to say, when the, when the user submits, I want to get this. Is it weekly, is it daily, or right away? Now, for those of us in doing support, um, <laughs> somebody was asking, my colleague was asking a question the other, the other day, and was like, uh, we have this email address for students to submit their issues. Then we have this form. Some of them will fill it on the email address at the same time. Go and fill, go and they will submit on they will submit to the email address at the same time. Go and fill the form. So when you handle it on the email address, you make the mistake of filling it, handling it again, then they will get confused. So we said, okay, let us just do this so that when they submit the form, it will send to the email address. And then we are still working on other ways to modify this, but this is just a simple thing. So if I click on save like this and I click on done. It means that when this form is submitted, you will get a response. So let me see if I can quickly open up my email. Um, see which of, okay, I'm using this mail now. Um, this is my junk mail. So you may see all kinds. I use this for junk things I, anytime I. So let me try and fill this form again and see if I will get a response. So this is it. I feel this. Oh my God, I'm putting. Um, and I submit. Let's see, it should work. Um, let's refresh this. Um, it should work, it should work, it should work. Okay, I'm coming. I'll check that out. It should work. Except if it is just me that is feeling it. Now, okay, in that case, um, there are other ways to do this. In case you do this and it's showing up that it's not um, um, submitting and all that. So other things I would like to now do then. The other thing I will now do is if I come back to this page and I go to the script editor, well, this may be a bit of, um, so this is it. It came already. So you can see somebody has filled. It says a user made changes to this and you can click here. And then you can see the attachment here that came. 
Now, what I want is not just that. I only saw that the attachment came. But what of if I'm able to see, the only challenge with doing this now is that what of if I'm able to see directly what the person feels? This gave me a link to that form. What of if I'm able to see individually? But that will create a lot of meals for you. So you also need to take note of that. That it, every time they feel, the, their responses is sent to you. Now, it is not yet organized, but I'm just showing you this in, in case it's, it's okay for you. Now, if you go to tools, well, this may be a bit of um, um, yeah, it, it's all that for some of us, but still, if you go to till, tools, um, it will ask you to put in, this is just like using a script for your forms. So I think I'll just do a copy and paste. I have this thing here. Well, it may not be um, too familiar for, to some of us, but you can just copy this and just... Oh, now, if the email that it is going to, so if I wanted to just go to another email, outside of my email, uh, you can decide that this, this, may, this goes to this email and you can save it and give it a name and say, send form details. Send form details, save, and good. It's okay now. So the next thing to do is simple. So when we, are, we just need to create a trigger so that anytime this happens, we can get, so we come to edit and say correct pro project um, triggers and we uh, can add, we can just add a trigger. Um, sorry, I need to pick up my project. So this is it. I can then add a trigger to this. I can then say trigger, add a trigger. So this is the, this is the, the, the project we created from Ed from spreadsheet. I said from spreadsheet, then event on submission. Anybody that submits, notify me daily or immediately. So I can do immediately. If I say immediately and I save it, it will ask me to, it will ask me to select this page. You may not see this particular window, but when you're doing it, you see it. It's going to ask for authorization to your email, um, which you can decide to um, go through. You can decide to go ahead. It will tell you that this is not verified and all that, but if you choose to do this, like I said, this is based on if you choose to do it, you can allow it. But that's Google talking to you now because most of the time they just want you to be careful. So, but if this works for you, this is what you will see immediately. So if I come back to this form, to this form now, and I fill the form again, and I fill this form again, I'm sorry, I should come here instead. And I fill this form, and I fill this form, I put the numbers, and I submit. So when anybody feel, fills this form, and this response that is filled here will be sent to the email. So um, this has been tested and working. Uh, so if you're interested in doing this, I can send you that short code that I did, but you also need to note that this is still okay. work in progress. Um, this is still okay. work in progress and a whole lot can still be done with it. So please keep um, note, just see how you can engage this. There are other things to do to it anyway. People can still modify it and say it should look better than it is looking and whatever you want to do with it, it's all available. The only thing I, find a bit worrisome about it is that anytime you send mail, it uses the same title. So that's one of the things I said needs to be worked on. Um, how can I ensure that every everything that is sent, I'm just thinking inside my head now, every time this response is sent, I want to see maybe with a certain title and all that. So this is just a development process that anybody can do. So this form is supposed to be sent to the one we did just now is supposed to be sent to the email I imputed. So if um, Dr. Dr. Joel is hearing me, he can check his email and confirm if he received 
the form that I just submitted. So he can confirm that um, if he received it. So you can check your mail and confirm in case you, it came and then you can see. So that's one of, that's also a simple thing to do with forms. Please, any question so that we can start bringing this to a close today. Any question, I think we have done some time today. I hope I, I've been able to communicate with us today.